Hello and welcome to something different. But first off, look down. Now look back up. If you notice that picture of art right there is down at the bottom for you. That's because it's my new channel icon. Yeah! So I made it with a pixel art style and I decided why not? I'll do a tiny little tutorial and show you guys about it. First off, I use paint.net. That's the program. Uh, if you feel like using this one. There's lots of really good painting programs out there. Um, but before we start, every channel icon is a square. Uh, YouTube says that the best resolution is an 800 by 800, which is 800 pixels by 800 pixels. Um, I chose 100 by 100 for this case because pixel art requires a smaller resolution in order for each pixel to have more meaning. Now what defines the pixel art is that each pixel is extremely important and by moving one pixel you can change lots of things in the game. Such as here. If I include this pixel onto there, that instead of looking like maybe a little castle or something, it looks somewhat like a chimney. Now like this, it could look like a bit of a castle bit coming off, or I don't know. And maybe one pixel there, it looks like a flag. So, pixels are extremely important in pixel art. Look, there's a bird. I don't know. <laughs> it's silly, but that's how pixel art is. It's, it's a logical thing and lots of stuff like that. So I chose a smaller resolution, and then I also got some reference pictures. Jungles. Jungles. Language. Jungles. Okay, so back to this. If you notice, there are four main parts. The inside of the D, the outside of the D, the vines, and the D itself. Okie dokie, let's tear it apart. Let's tear it apart. Let's tear it apart. So first off, we started with this. I just created a frame that the D kind of would cover. And I decided the D can either be all-encompassing or it can be a portal to something. My brother decided it was a portal. And a portal to what? To a fantasy type of thing. There's no dragons or anything, but hey, it looks surreal and picturesque, which is kind of what I was going for. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice that there's a lot of colors that are used a lot. Like that one is the same color as this one. And this color is the same color as this one, I think. And this one is the same color as this one. And this one is used here. So, things like that. Colors are reused because what I chose to do was a limited palette. Which means I limited the colors that I was allowed to use. And that one creates a style and two creates a bit of a challenge for me myself as an artist so I get to have some fun with colors. Now let's talk about colors. Colors are extremely important. There are ways you can use colors such as dithering here which kind of helps blend things and create textures in such cases. It, it shows a lot more in the jungle kind of scene. But we'll get we'll show a bit of that later and if you can see down here it creates some textures so dithering is a technique that's used a lot and there's also like just in general shading kind of like this kind of thing which is an unfinished bit of forest so colors are really important uh i'd start off without a limited palette so you can get used to just the pixel art style in general but what i did was i took this base color now, if you notice here, I have that color like right here. And I have all of these colors connecting to each other. So the jungle out here uses these. This fantasy part in here uses these. And the dirt here uses these. This is my kind of nature-y thingy. And the water, I just made these up. But each of these has its own little special thing. And uh, the color I had... I used in multiple places because I have a limited palette and it's more fun that way. But also, you have to be sure when using highlights and things, so I have lights, darks, and mediums-ish, you have to make sure everything makes sense. Now by it makes sense, 
I mean, if you look at these vines, let's put things some things up. If you look at these vines, it looks like their highlights are on this side. There's darks here, such as where it comes out from behind the D, and there's lights here. These all make sense because let's say there's a light source here. I thought, where would the shades go? So the light would directly hit these and these and these and not so much that and not so much that. So you have to use a lot of reason and logic when creating these things. So let's start getting into uh, uh, some of the weirder things. So here I created a base because I didn't like this the way this jungle was going. So I created this because I thought it was a very nice back color for this kind of jungle. Now, if you notice, this has much less detail than this. That's because just as these mountains are have less detail than this castle, they're all further away. And as it, things are further away, they go into the horizon. Makes sense. Logical. Now, shadows. Lots of shadows here. If you notice, these ones up front if like the background horizon is this color and things blend into the horizon such as these they're close to the sky color this these are closer to the background color if you notice these are darker as opposed to these because these are actually in front makes sense logic now the light source for the for both the fantasy and the jungle is coming from the top left here because if you look at these the highlights are on the left side the darkers are on the right the highlights on the trees left side highlights for these trees are also on the left in general it's somewhere more above so I'd say center left because um, the highlights for the trees are more left but the vines and multiple plants it's just in general up but a lot of it has to make sense now there's two way, two main ways that you can do pixel art. One, you can do it all in black and white, so that really works the shades and highlights and stuff. And then you color it in later, or you can leave it black and white, because a lot of it's really cool like that. Um, what I do is I get a base color. So here's a base color. If you notice, it's the color that's used a lot more in, in each object. So that one is a base color. This color is in the vine. That color is in the hill, this color is in the forest, that kind of like that kind of thing. So I took the base color and then I just added detail onto it as needed. Um, so from here, this base color, I just drew some trees in and some vines in. And then from there, I decided where the shading was in there. And I had a bush here. So if we remove these again. I had a bush here, and then I added some leaves, and then I added some fern things, which if you notice, each pixel in a pixel art is extremely important, because this looks like a mess of pixels. Holy cow, what is that? Well, from far away, it looks like a fern. Surprise! That kind of thing. Each pixel is extremely important, and that's what makes it pixel art. Because every other picture has pixels, but it isn't technically pixel art unless each pixel can change something. So, yes, um, I think that's a good general tutorial on pixel art and my new channel icon. I think it's a good introduction. If you like this tutorial kind of thing, if you think I'm a good teacher, <laughs> um, you can tell me so in the comments and maybe like, I don't know, talk about stuff. I don't know. Do things in the comments. Like the video, rate the video, comment the video. If you don't, if you like these and my normal stuff, which is video game things, usually indie games, subscribe. Why not? Or you couldn't, and that's fine too. I don't know. But yeah. So thank you for watching. This is a little pixel art tutorial backslash YouTube channel icon, less so channel icon thing. Thanks for watching. Toodles.